We begin tonight with breaking news. Reports of multiple people shot on the city's west side. It's all we think about. Multiple suspects walked up to the victim demanding his car. Our biggest fear. Breaking tonight, four teens, three 15-year-olds and one 16-year-old all shot while on a front porch. Being the next victim of a crime. The man stumbled down the Chinatown platform, bleeding from his neck from a gunshot wound. But what are your chances? We're not just talking about one or two robberies here. We're talking dozens of them. Who's really the most at risk? Is it white men, white women, Asians, Hispanics, black men? No, it's not. It's women who look like Tonia Thomas. It's, it's scary. According to Chicago police crime data for 2022, when you look at all the offenses, count all the victims, black women are the most at risk. It's honestly, it's not fair. Unfair because that 67,000 means 25% of crime victims are black women, but they make up only 16% of Chicago's population. And when the CBS2 investigators kept digging, we discovered even more disturbing data. Black women represented more than a third of kidnappings, 35% of assaults, 38% of batteries attacked and injured, 40% of rape victims, and let this sink in. Black women are 52% of human trafficking victims. Remember, they're only 16% of the population. To have to navigate through life knowing that you'll potentially become a victim of a crime, primarily because of your race and your gender combined, it's mafia. Thomas survived a rape. Um, this is all the paperwork from, from the hospital. But she still feels the pain. Um, what happened to me, it won't go away. It happened here, this West Side apartment building, at a friend's party. I did have a couple of drinks, um, but nothing too crazy. Pictures of a happy, smiling Thomas were taken just minutes before she felt dizzy and went to the bathroom. The police report details the horrors of the criminal sexual assault. I remember being in the bathroom with my um, the person who assaulted me, and I remember just trying to like get out, get out of the restroom, um, but I couldn't get out. The car was parked actually right there on the corner, right before the stop sign. Even when it comes to nonviolent crimes and reports where police record race, black women, I, I couldn't believe it. Like Evelyn Sparks are targets. Black women account for 24% of property thefts, arson, 28%, car thefts, 29%. Again, they're only 16% of the population. You could see it out the window. A 2019 Kia. I parked there every day. But in less than 10 minutes, it was gone. Photos of a trashed Kia found by police an hour later. Somebody to take something that you work so hard for, it just makes you feel very violated. Why are they targets? Because they're, if you want to call it easy prey. Yes, yeah. Geneva Brown is a professor of criminology at DePaul University. We just had an unfortunate officer, Preston, who was killed. She was on her way home at 1.40 in the morning, and she was a target of a robbery, disproportionately. Black women are working third shift jobs. Black women are in communities where there is a lack of a middle class, a lack of uh, a economic foundation that would deter this type of behavior. Where they live, when they work, and listen to this, how they are perceived by criminals put a target on the backs of black women. You know that you're in a neighborhood where crime is the norm and not the exception. You're in a neighborhood where you know that the police are slow to respond. It creates that atmosphere where, unfortunately, you have people who feel empowered to become bolder or to continue to commit offenses until they're caught. Why does it always have to be me? When do I get a break? When can I have some peace? I hear those words quite often in the work that I do. Gabrielle Molden Carwell works as a trauma therapist, helping black women cope with their emotional pain. It's disheartening and it causes self-doubt because something must be wrong with me. She knows the trauma of sexual assault, not just because she treats survivors. I've seen it and my mom. She's lived with it. I've seen it and my grandmother on my mom's side. I've seen it for myself. And how old were you? I was 12. In the year 2000, 
when this photo of a carefree little girl posed for the camera, masking her torture. It went on for about six months or so. I was angry. I was heartbroken. It's very aggravating. Rage keeps me up at night a lot. How long have black women been overrepresented? The CBS2 investigators went searching for answers. We looked at every crime, every victim, not just one or two years, not three or four. We went back 21 years. CBS2 investigative data journalist Elliot Ramos crunched the numbers. The stuff is buried in like statistical uh, reports that come out every year. But it's here, the latest, pages 79 to 81. You got batteries, you got, you got robberies. Ramos combined the crime data. By day of week, by location type. With race, sex, and age from police reports. It was surprising at how consistently uh, black women in particular were over-indexed in relation to the population, like year after year after year. The revelation, black women have always suffered more than others. A surprising fact? I was 16 when all of that was going on. No one suffers more than young black girls under 18. A perfect picture of a thriving high school junior at Little Village until she dated the wrong boyfriend. I remember like him grabbing my arm and he swung on me and hit me. Uh, he was very violent. He was very mentally abusive. All of that was very traumatic. From 2001 to 2022, for every white girl attacked and injured, there were 18 black girls hurt. I decided, like, I wanted to take some pills. Um, I no longer was getting the A and Bs that I wanted. Um, so if my grades began to drop, um, I felt very burdened. And so I no longer wanted to feel burdened. I feel like this is just as bad as the, the war on drugs, right? Like, everything went shut down for that. But what about these crimes? But for black women disproportionately targeted by crime, there is no special task force, no mayoral commission. We talk about big picture stuff. We talk about, you know, hot topics. But black female victimization is not a hot topic. In Brown ads, no public outcry to address the core causes. And I think that this is a conversation that needs to be had. We've been counting CTA attacks, and this one marks eight in the past 10 days. As a black woman walking into the world. Some of the 14 wounded are still in the hospital. Every day and knowing like, you know, there's this high probability that something's going to happen to me when I leave the house. And it's like, do you even leave home? But we have to, we can't, you know, live a life where we're sheltered, but why should we have to? Here's a sad reality. The data shows that black women are the most victimized group in Chicago, not just last year, but almost every year for the last two decades. Tonight, CBS2 investigator Dorothy Tucker meets the women who wanted to share their stories of encountering crimes in places they visit all the time, places you may visit too. A warning, their stories of their physical pain and emotional scars may be difficult to hear. The photo is hard to see, but necessary, these women say, to shine a light on the larger problem and send a call for help. One story in particular ends in a tragic twist. Chicago. Sunshine already in Chicago land. It'll be here for a while. For all it has to offer, can be a challenging city. New at 10, we're learning more about the victims in the horrific hit and run over the weekend. At least 57 people shot over 38 the violent robberies in three weeks, especially for black women. Miss Patterson is moving slowly just out of the hospital, recovering from gunshot wounds. I get in my car every day and I'm concerned about what will happen to me. You know, I don't know if today's the day somebody want to carjack me. I don't know if today's the day that they want to rob me. I don't know. And that's scary about being in Chicago and being a black woman because we are not protected. Consider a mundane trip to the gas station. In 2022, 66 black women were carjacked or robbed at the pump. 
I was filling up my gas for the week. It was over the weekend. I was filling up my gas for the week, for the work week. Um, Sierra Jamison was one of them. I had a, a young gentleman come up to me and ask me, did I smoke? I said, no, sir, I do not smoke. She wasn't driving this car. She was driving her prize 2018 black Jeep Wrangler. That's what the man wanted. He was like, literally, come right here. Bitch, give me your keys. Even though he had a kitchen knife, this single mother, an aspiring nurse with a six-year-old son with autism, said no. What made me say no because I observed him. I could tell that he was really, I, I could tell that he really didn't know what he was doing because he was flinchy, he was nervous. She also saw two other women nearby who had her back and a bat. So I'm doing this, I said, give me your back, give me your back. So he did be like this, he let go, then he ran. Jamison was naturally relieved. But then she got angry. It was a few men here after the incident saying that they that this young man was standing here the whole day. But he didn't attack anyone until she came along. I'm not sure because I'm a young black woman, he won't target me. I, I know he didn't target the, the man that came up and through here. I guess he feel like I was gonna be vulnerable, be like, huh, get the key. But no, he got the wrong female. If black women feel like they're targets of crime, they have good reasons. Look at the stats. Simply going through their daily lives makes them vulnerable. Last year at grocery stores, 277 black women were preyed on by criminals. In and around Chicago parks, 162. Even in the sanctuary of a church, 47 black women filed police reports. And on the public transportation so many rely on, 769 black women faced assaults, batteries, robberies, and other crimes just trying to get to work return home or go to school. And they came from right here. Kenya Merrills and her mom were attacked by a mob of robbers on the red line at 95th Street after leaving a downtown college. He punched me in my face. I had already knew I was gonna die. So I just said, <laughs> let me just shield my daughter so she won't die. Fortunately, mom and daughter were not seriously hurt. We can't say the same for Naya Williams. Out for a late night snack. I feel like I had a life changing moment that's forever gonna stick with me, simply because I went to go get something to eat. A couple of euros at Maggie's, that's all she wanted. It was here in Bronzeville a few months ago where her life changed. I wasn't in an argument with anyone. I wasn't at a party. I wasn't caught in a crossfire. The police report listed the incident as a street crime. Last year, 1,130 black women were attacked and injured on Chicago streets. I was targeted. Three strangers, unprovoked, started screaming at Williams inside the restaurant. Then they followed her to her car. That night, I feared for my life. What happened next was that life-changing moment. You saw the gun. He shot boom, 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 and just start shooting at our head. Her tone today, kind of matter of fact. And that was it. I didn't even know I was shot right away. But these photos from that night, her hospital bed, scream agony. The biggest burn I ever felt, my teeth were blown out. <laughs> I have no teeth here on the side. Um, I was spitting out bullets and teeth at the same time. Williams misses her smile. Yes but she acknowledges her blessings. Most people don't survive, you know, being shot in the face. I'm just thankful. I'm so blessed to be here. We need to take you back to Sierra Jamison's story. Remember, she survived the attempted carjacking. I'm grateful. I went home to my son. I thank God every day that I'm here because it could have went a different way. Jamison went home to her son on that day. But less than a month after this interview, she was the victim of another crime. Only this time, she would never see her son again. We're honoring her legacy. We're honoring her life. Jameson was murdered just days after celebrating her 30th birthday. Found strangled inside her garage, her body lying next to her Jeep Wrangler. The family released balloons in her memory. My niece is no longer here in flush but my niece is always in here in spirit.
CBS 2 investigator Dorothy Tucker is here with more reaction to her series Investigating Injustice. Dorothy? For more than 100,000 people viewed our reports about black women at risk. Some of them called, others emailed, and thousands posted their comments on social media. Those reactions range from outrage to concern to frustration. But one city council member is now calling for action. Shock. Sadness. Unbelievable. That's how 36 Ward Alderman Gilbert Viegas reacted after watching our CBS2 investigation. Well, we've heard it, you know, on the peripheral. Black women are, are being uh, disproportionately impacted with crime. But your segments, like, really uh, put it into context. Our investigation included 20 years of crime data that we received through freedom of information requests. We analyzed 8 million profiles accounting for race, age, and gender. What we discovered was alarming. It's, it's, it's scary. Black women make up only 16% of Chicago's population, but last year they accounted for 35% of assaults, 38% of batteries, 40% of rape victims, and 52% of human trafficking. To have to navigate through life knowing that you'll potentially become a victim of a crime, primarily because of your race and your gender combined, it's not fair. Tonia Thomas was raped. We shared her story and a few others, but the one Viegas remembers most is Sierra Jameson. The carjacking ending in the murder. In December of 2022, Jameson was the victim of an attempted carjacking. We interviewed her in August of 2023. I was filling my gas for the week. It was over the weekend. Before we could even air the story, Jameson was murdered. I think it's important that the city of Chicago uh, put forward some type of initiative to deal with this, this important issue. His recommendation to establish a task force. What I want to do is get folks together from Department of Family Support Services, Chicago Park District, Chicago Police District, um, Department of Housing, uh, and the mayor's office uh, to figure out what we can do and talk about first what the what the problem is. Also on the list, uh, maybe hear from other people that have been impacted by this, hear from families, and really honored to speak on this because I think that this is about social justice. Alderman Vega says he has already reached out and gotten the support of Alderman Stephanie Coleman, who chairs the city council's Black Caucus. Vega's plans to introduce a resolution to establish a task force as soon as possible. We will keep you updated on his progress. All right, Dorothy, thank you. You couldn't have told me that it was that bad, but when I think about, well, who do you know that hasn't been a victim of a crime? Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox reacting to a CBS2 investigation exposing an injustice woven into the city for decades. New analysis from our team shows black women accounted for 30% of all crime victims in 2022. That's nearly one in three. CBS2 investigator Dorothy Tucker reached out to Fox for her reaction to our reporting because she's not only the county's top prosecutor, she's also a victim. What followed was a raw, emotional, and candid conversation. So who am I? I am Kim Fox, I'm the Cook County State's Attorney. I was sexually abused by a relative from the age of about five until seven. It is our position based on the facts, the evidence, and the law. I was sexually assaulted on my way home from school by two strangers when I was eight in the Austin neighborhood. We believe that in this case, justice has been served. I was sexually assaulted in college as a 20-year-old at Southern Illinois University. Yeah. Yeah. There have been moments where I can feel, smell, taste what happened to me. And I find myself saying to myself, look at the leaves. We wanted to interview the county's top prosecutor to get her reaction to our CBS2 investigation. I was heartbroken. It's very aggravating. Rage keeps me up at night. A 20-year analysis revealing how black women in Chicago have always borne the brunt of crime. 
They make up only 16% of the population, but account for an alarming percentage of victims of violent and nonviolent crimes. I'll be honest, Dorothy, I did not want to look at your story. We now understand Fox's initial response. Her trauma is generational. My mother, my aunts, my friends, myself. Fox has publicly acknowledged her childhood abuse. I am a crime survivor. At a survivor's rally in a crowd of women and men. I was sexually assaulted as a child. Fox explained the importance of speaking out. I am here because I want more than anything to make sure that what happened to me does not happen again to me or to any of us. As a black woman walking into the world. Fox finally found the courage to watch our story. And out of respect for you and your work, I did watch. She also found the courage to be more candid with us about the little girl with a big smile. I was in my mother's womb. I was in my mother's womb and I wasn't safe. Fox's mother, Ganelle Wilson, was eight months pregnant with her baby girl, living in the old Cabrini Green housing development and getting ready to celebrate her son's first birthday when a stranger broke into their home. And she woke up in the middle of the night to find a man uh, standing above her um, with a knife, threatening to kill her if she didn't tell him where the gifts were that he saw her bringing in for my brother's party. So for the entirety of the life that my mother had, that I lived um, with her, she never had a peaceful night's sleep. And we learned to live with her screams. You remember those screams? I sleep with those screams. Fox's childhood memories are gut-wrenching. This is where the leaves come in. I don't talk about it in depth um, publicly often. Um, because if you dig down into it, um, it is almost like it happened yesterday. The year? 1980. Place, Austin Community, near Byford Elementary. The second grader was on her way home from school when she was snatched and raped by two men. She did what she had to, to survive. The survival technique, when you are being assaulted in that fashion. I remember it was an abandoned building, looking out at a tree and uh, focusing on the leaves the leaves. Today, they're a reminder of her strength. In the, the grips of the most difficult time of this job, I would write daily, look at the leaves. It'll be over. Despite her heartbreaking history, by day of week, by location type, with race, sex, and age, Fox found the data, the numbers, the hard truth. Jarring. Jarring. Here's what hit home for the survivor of sexual assault. Black girls suffer more than any other group from 2001 to 2022 for every white girl attacked and injured. There were 18 black girls hurt. You couldn't have told me that it was that bad, but when I think about, well, who do you know that hasn't been a victim of a crime? Even as the county's top prosecutor, how they are perceived by Fox was stunned by the findings in our investigation. We have a real problem here. We have a fundamental issue with valuing black women across all measures. The real issue? What is it that it makes it difficult for us to see the difference between an R. Kelly victim and a Harvey Weinstein one? Is there something before you leave that you will try and do? I think in this last year that I have to be intentional around the focus on this class of victims because it has become incredibly clear that this has been an ignored class. 
Fox will turn to black women to help her focus. It's urgent to me in this administration to do all that we can, both internally with our policies and practices and externally with our partners and most importantly with the communities that we serve to bring them in to figure out how collectively we address this issue. Her commitment to support a commission on women and girls. That harm happened to me 40 something years ago. And I still struggle to talk. I think being vocal about my own experience and the freedom that I then think it gives to others to say what has happened to them. Talking, says Fox, about those painful, agonizing lived experiences is necessary to spark change for black women in Chicago. And this is generations in the making and will take a significant amount of time to address. It's urgent. I'm here simply because of my love for black women. I'm here because I'm a problem solver. I'm here because black women matter. I want generations after me to understand that the color of our skin is important and that change needs to come about today. They are leaders in the black community, directors of social service programs, heads of multi-million dollar foundations. I am also, um, and for some, a black woman who has also been a victim of crime. It's personal. Welcome, friends. It's professional. Welcome, beautiful women. It's a call for action as they gather around a huge table at the North Lawndale Employment Network. What can we do as women to talk about the data from our CBS2 investigation? We begin tonight with breaking news. A 20-year analysis of Chicago crime reports. You got batteries, you got, you got robberies. Revealed an alarming fact. By day of week, by location type. Women who look like them are disproportionately victims of violence. I was shocked. I've been a judge, prosecutor, public defender, but I never just picked up that this data existed. Our question really is, and here's a twist, what is our immediate collective next step? The person posing that important question, not a black woman. In response to hearing about this, a black man. What should be done? What's the next step? Chasta Martin, chief strategy officer. My selfish desire was to make um, black female victimization a priority for us. I want to see us have um, a very specific strategy to recruiting and engaging black women. It's also personal for the son, brother, father of three, the youngest, a sunglass-sporting little girl. When I think about uh, the role that black men need to play in our community, uh, it is to protect and support our women. And when I saw the piece uh, on a you know, grand scale, it, it showed me that we had failing, uh, uh, failed at uh, doing that. So now Martin is doing his part. We are in this room full of black expertise by soliciting solutions many different social impact sectors and these prominent politically connected black sisters are the perfect people to have at the table maybe a call to meet with the chief of police to meet with um, the mayor he he is a father i think that that would be something that we could make happen what do we do do a policy need to be put in um place do we have to go to springfield like i would suggest that maybe there's a way to convene um a kind of a think tank the idea of a think tank i look at the way that resonates with the president of the largest civil rights organization in the city what role can the organization play well, I think one of our most important responsibilities as the Urban League is to convene people. Who do you think should be at the table? You have to have women who have been victimized. They have to be at the table. You want our fraternal organizations, sororities, uh, fraternities, uh, certainly other civic and social organizations. It has to matter collectively to everyone that black women are suffering in this way because that's the only way we're going to get long-term solutions. 